Hi there, Randy here from San Cormont, and I'm back with another short video on how to care for and assemble your Cormont Capto rotating adapters. Your rotating adapters offer high precision characteristics to all your rotating tool assemblies. So it's important to have proper care and I'm here to share with you today a few little tips on how to care for your tools before you begin assembly. Today, I'll be covering what to look for when you unpackage a new tool and begin building your assembly. I'd like to get started by showing you the tools that will be required to do the job. So let's get started. Let's first have a look at the assembly block. This assembly block can hold tools in a vertical position and a horizontal position. A few other tools needed for the job. We have another collar that fits into the existing collar on the horizontal side of the assembly block. We have an Allen key with a socket on the end and a half inch drive to fit on the torque wrench. And of course we have a torque wrench. And in the middle, we have a spanner that fits onto the retaining nut down inside the adapter. Let's now review some of the basic tools that we're going to be using for today's demonstration. And please keep in mind, these tools have been used in machine tool demonstrations. So they are not new with the exception of the Cat V holder face mill adapter on the far left. So here we have a Cat V holder with a C6 capto coupling in the front and center bolt clamping. You can see the center bolt and we have a dot on the flange that coincides with our dot-to-dot -dot system for assembly alignment of all rotating adapters. Here we have a reduction adapter going from C6 to a C5 coupling, again, center bolt clamping, which is the strongest. And we have our dot-to-dot -dot system for alignment. Then we have a short version of an extension adapter for really short working envelopes. We can go from C5 to C4. Again, it has the dot to dot system. And one thing to remember about these short versions, they have a center bolt in the front for bolting up your tool assembly, but there is no center bolt capability in the back end. These versions are too short for a thread for the center bolt to get good gripping strength. Here we have a hydraulic chuck, our core chuck 930. Again, has a dot for alignment on any adapter that you choose to use it on. And then we have a Cat V holder, face mill adapter, fresh out of the package, which I'd like to show you and demonstrate first what you should look for with a new tool. Now, as I mentioned, this face mill adapter is brand new out of the package. I've already unwrapped it from its original packaging so that we could save a little bit of time. If you look closely, all the ground surfaces on this adapter will have a film, which is actually an anti-rust or rust inhibitor that protects the tool from the point of manufacturing and shipping and arriving to the customer. So now I have a clean cloth and I have a very mild cleaner that I'm going to use to clean this base mill adapter. As mentioned, there is a little bit of rust inhibitor on all these ground surfaces. So it's important to clean that all off around here on the gripper grooves for the automatic tool change arm and on the pilot diameter and face where we have ground surfaces. Anywhere you have a ground surface, it's best to clean it off so that your tools run accurately and clamp securely. Okay, so now we have a nice clean adapter and uh, we're ready to go. Let's have a look now at our basic adapter where we have a Cat V on the back end to C6 on the front end with center bolt clamping. And if you look down inside the bore of the center bolt area, 
you might be able to see down in there. And there's actually a retaining nut that holds the center bolt in its proper position. The retaining nut, keep in mind, has a left-hand thread. It has two notches 180 degrees apart so that our spanner can fit into that assembly and allow us to make adjustments if necessary. So I'm going to mount this tool in the horizontal position on our tool assembly block right now. And I'm also going to keep in mind my dot for alignment is at the three o'clock position when I mount it here. And then What I always recommend when customers get a new tool is also make sure you purchase a spanner for the retaining nut. And you can see the spanner on one end has a couple of drive dogs or keys. It has a bore in the center to receive the center bolt and it has a half inch drive on the other end. So we're going to insert that into the bore here and using the Allen key for the center bolt, in the other end, I'm simply going to thread the center bolt into the ID thread of the spanner. And that will pull a spanner down into a position where you can rotate it and lock it down into the keys. And we're just merely going to check to make sure that that is tight, that retaining nut, before we assemble any tools. So I'm just going to use my torque wrench in the reverse position because this is a left-handed thread, as I mentioned before, on the retaining nut, and I'm just gonna tighten it up, and yes, it is tight from the factory. They usually are, but occasionally you might run into one that might be a little bit loose. So then I can just release the spanner from the center bolt nut, and we're ready to assemble a tool. So now we're going to quickly go over the assembly block having a C6 capto sleeve on the vertical position that will help you preset all your tools. So you can get whatever capto size you need to fit into this side of the block. And it allows you to put your tool holders in there in a nice, comfortable, vertical position. It's easy to work with your tools to get your tools set up before they go to the tool presetter. Once you've clamped your tool into this chuck, for example, we're gonna take note of the dot to dot system. What that does is it ensures correct alignment inside the female coupling where this notch on the end of this coupling will align and mate with a pin down inside the female coupling. Once we put this up into place, we can use our extension key here for the center bolt. And I'm merely going to spin that up there and you can see how it's pulling the tool into the holder nicely. Okay, I've got it snugged up there by hand. I've got my dot to dot system aligned correctly. And I'm just going to set my torque wrench for the proper setting for a C6. And I'm just gonna torque that guy up. Need to switch directions, there we go. Counterclockwise and one click is all it takes. And now that tool is properly torqued and assembled. One more thing I'd like to cover. If you've been experiencing vibrations in your machining process and you have not been able to pinpoint the actual cause, then one thing to look at is to disassemble the center bolt and retainer and just have a good look in there, making sure that the retainer is tight so the center bolt is in its correct position and giving the right amount of pull force in the tool assembly. So to do that, we're just going to simply use our spanner. I'm going to put it in place into the front end using my hex bit in the back end. I'm going to thread the center bolt into the spanner 
and then just find the, that notch for the spanner piece to fit down in and just snug it up back in is all you need to do. It's finger tight. And I'm just going to put my wrench, my torque wrench on the spanner and I'm going to apply force in a clockwise direction because this is a left-handed thread. So there, cracked it loose. So that tells me that this retaining nut was plenty tight in there. We don't need the torque wrench or the wrench to get the assembly out of there. And now we're going to have not only the retaining nut, but the center bolt come out together. And you can see the center bolt will unthread from the spanner easily to provide an inspection of the tool. Everything looks good. So we can just drop this guy in place. Thread our center bolt into position. And rotating in a counterclockwise direction, reinstall the retainer. Tighten in a counterclockwise direction, and we are good to go. So now all we need to do to release the spanner from the center bolt, using our hex key, we can separate the two. And now we know this tool has been inspected, everything is okay, and it's ready to go back in service. Now, earlier in the video, I did show an extra collar that we have, and this collar is used on the horizontal side of the assembly block. And it just happens to fit right down inside this existing seat, this existing collar for that Cat 50 holder. And uh, this, this opening here is suited perfectly to the gripper grooves on any adapter, extension adapter, that Cormac Capto has to offer. So this being a C6 coupling, this fits our C6 coupling just perfectly. And I'm going to have a look at where I'm orienting my dots. And it just happens that this is a C6 to C5 reduction adapter. I just happen to have a C5 hydraulic chuck available here with a drill already mounted in it from a previous job. So all I need to do is simply align the dots with the holder and I'm just going to tighten this one up by hand for demonstration purposes only. This tool will be disassembled immediately afterward. Just to show you how that extra collar can help you assemble your tools quick and easy. So that is assembled and re essentially ready to go. So one little added piece of information I'd like to share is all Cormac Capto couplings are a polygon shape, but they also are tapered. It also has a shoulder, so we have ground surfaces here that will mate very nicely. When it is properly clamped up, you actually get a taper lock inside the coupling. So this chuck is now taper locked to this adapter. So what you can expect when you go to remove an assembly or disassemble two tools you're going to crack it loose at first and then it's going to go a little ways and when that draw bar inside there hits its mating shoulder in the in the next tool it gets tight again and you have to crack it loose a second time and what that's doing is breaking the taper lock between the female and the male coupling okay so keep that in mind if you feel it get tightened up the second time when you're loosening it just remember that you're breaking the taper lock, okay? So now your tool's been cleaned, assembled, and it's ready to go. I hope these tips are helpful, and I'll see you next time.